Hello everyone, this is Finance 101 Excel in Excel. We are in module number six. And in this video tutorial, we're gonna be going over the second part of our textbook project. So we created a table in the first part of this video. Let's now see how we can print this table. If your table is active, uh, by pressing on the print option on the backstage view, you are going to be given an option to print either the active sheet or you can actually just print the table. So that's what we're gonna do in this next steps. So go ahead and make sure that your table is active. If you need to just click anywhere on that table to make it active, we're gonna click on file on the main ribbon to display the backstage view here, click on print. And here we're gonna go to the settings area where it says print active sheet. If you click on that drop down menu, we want to change that to print selected table, right? Our goal is to just print the table. Also, we're going to change the orientation from portrait orientation to landscape orientation. And in the last option where it says no scaling, change that to fit sheet on one page. Right? So as you can see, we're seeing the preview on the right hand side of the screen. And now I have the entire table on one page with landscape orientation. So at this point, just make sure you have your printer uh, selected and then just hit print. Next, we're gonna learn how to sort our table. So let me first show you several methods that we can use to sort a table and then we're gonna start following the steps. So the first method is if your table is active, you can go to the data tab on the main ribbon and in the sort and filter group, you will see several options to sort a table. The first one, the one that says A to Z, is to sort a table in ascending order, so from lowest to highest value. The one right below it is to sort it from Z to A or in descending order, from highest to lowest. If you click on the sort button, you'll see that here you can perform a custom sort of your table by adding several layers. So you can sort the table by more than one field. So we're going to cancel that. Uh, another option is if you go to the Home tab, in the editing group on the right, you have a sort and filter button. If you click on it, you have the same options, ascending, descending order, or a custom sort. Um, also, you can sort a table by using the auto, fil auto filter buttons in each column. So if we click on those little arrows, those are called the filter buttons, and you have the sorting options here as well, right? Ascending, descending, etc. Finally, another option is if you click anywhere on the table, right click, and here you have the sorting option as well in that drop down menu, right? All right, so let's go ahead and uh, work on sorting our table. First, we wanna sort it in ascending order by using the name field. So we're gonna follow the instructions from this point on. So make sure you have, you need to um, either scroll up or down so that your entire table is displayed on the screen. We're gonna click on the home tab. We're gonna click on cell B9 because that's where we have our name field. That's the first entry in that column. And this time we're gonna do it using the sort and filter button in the home tab editing group. So click on that sort and filter button. And here we wanna click on A to Z, so in ascending order. And as you can see, that has sorted the table using the name field uh, in ascending order. So it's alphabetical order, right, A to Z. All right, next we're gonna work on sorting the table in descending order using the account values. So from largest to smallest. So click on cell E9. That's our first entry in the account values column. We're going to display the data tab. So we're gonna do it with a different sorting method this time. Going through the data tab and click on the largest to smallest button. So it's the one that says Z to A. All right, as you can see now, we have our account values with the largest value at the top, the lowest at the bottom. Next, we're going to practice sorting our, our table using several fields. We're gonna use a custom sort. So Excel allows you to sort by up to 256 fields or columns, but in this example, we're gonna do it just by uh, sorting the table using three fields only. We're going to do a sort of the supervisor review number 
within specialty and within branch. So that means that we're going to sort our table by branch first in alphabetical order. Then within each branch, we're going to sort the specialty also in alphabetical order. And then finally, within each specialty, we're going to sort by the supervisor review number. We want to do that sort from largest to smallest. So let's go ahead and follow our steps. All right, so we're going to go to the home tab. We're going to uh, make sure that we have a cell active anywhere on the table and we're going to click on the sort and filter button on the home tab editing group. So here we want to click on custom sort and on the column sort by field we want to start with our major sort key here click on that drop down menu we want to start with branch right as I said that's our major sort key now, if necessary, on the sort on field, you want to make sure that you have cell values here. I do, but if not, click on that drop down menu and select cell values. And then finally, in the order here, we want to do A to Z. So I need to reverse that, right? I want to select A to Z. So we are using ascending order, right? In this case, alphabetically, right? Because it's a text field. All right, next, we're going to uh, add another level. So click on that plus sign in green that says add level. This adds another sorting level. So in the den by field, click on it. This time we want to choose the um, specialty, right? Because that, that's our uh, intermediate sort key. We want to make sure that we have cell values on the sort on field and the A to Z in the order. And then click on the add level to add our minor sorting key. Here we want to select the supervisor review number. We want to make sure that it's sorted on cell values again. And finally, we want to select from largest to smallest. All right. So just double check branch from A to Z, specialty from A to Z, and then supervisor review from largest to smallest. Click OK. And we've done our sort. Let's review what happened here. All right. So our branch first, we see A is first, right? We're sorting them in ascending order in alphabetical order then has the b for brandsburg and then plain field at the end then within each branch we're so sorting by specialty so let's take a look at the avon branch as you can see there are the specialties are sorted in ascending order c for cd check-in then ira and then loans and now within each specialty we should have sorted the supervisory review in uh, descending order. So let's take a look. Some of this, we only have one entry per specialty, but this one, IRA slash SEP, we have two. So let's see what happened here. Uh, look at the supervisor review. We have that 10 uh, number, review number, and then a nine. So they are on descending order from largest to smallest. So next, we're going to learn how to query our table using the auto filter option. When we create a table in Excel, an auto filter button is automatically added to each column or field. As you can see, those are the arrows that are to the right of each column header. So let's click on one of them. I'm going to click on the one for name. Uh, this tool allows you to sort, query, or filter the data. The first few options that you see here work very much like the sorting techniques that we had studied earlier. We can sort in ascending order, descending order, etc. Then the next options are for filtering the data. We can filter by name, by color, by specific text string, or even by the records that are included in that column. So in this sense, the criteria that the data needs to meet is very much like a logical test and Excel will only display those records that meet that criterion uh, or criteria, right? Just like we learned before with the sorting techniques where we can apply them to more than one column, we can also filter the data by more than one criteria. That process of filtering the data by one or more criteria, it's called a query. And once Excel displays the records that meet that criteria, we can copy that data, we can edit it, format it, we can print it or even create a chart with it. So let's go ahead and practice using the auto filter button to sort our data. Now, I want to show you here that previously I had applied a custom sort where I had um, sorted the data by supervisor review within specialty within branch, right? So as you can see, there's an arrow pointing up next to branch and specialty because we sorted those two fields in ascending order. And the supervisor review has an arrow pointing down because that field was 
sorted in descending order. I wanted to point this out because once I apply, apply a new sorting rule using the auto filter button, you'll see that this new sorting rule will overwrite the existing one. So let's follow the instructions. We're going to click the filter button in the account values column. And here we want to sort by smallest to largest. So the very first option from smallest to largest. All right, let's see what happened to our data. As you can see, the account values are now sorted from lowest to highest. Also, I see that in the branch column, the arrow pointing up has disappeared. Same thing for specialty and for supervisor rating uh, review, right? So the new sort uh, overwrote our previous custom sort. Now, next, we're going to use the auto filter button to query a table. So our objective here is to query the entire manage, manager's table. We want to display only those records where the specialty is not equal to loan. So we want to keep all the other types of accounts, uh, IRA and SCP, a CD money market, checking savings account. Also, we want those um, records that have a rating equal to excellent. All right, so we're going to click the filter button in cell D8, specialty. And here, <coughs> excuse me, we want to deselect loans, right? We're going to keep the check marks in all the other boxes, but we want to remove the check mark in loans. So go ahead and press uh, OK. All right, as you can see, that reduced the number of records. We eliminated all the records where the account uh, type is a loan. Next, we want to apply the auto filter uh, criterion in the um, GH, right, in the rating column. And we want to deselect everything except for the excellent rating. So we want to check or uncheck, right, the fair rating, good and poor. We only want to see a check mark in the excellent rating. All right, we're going to press OK. So that leaves me only with three records. As you can see, even the totals have been updated, right? The totals are now including only those three remaining records. Uh, all right. Now, did this filter remove the previous sort? Not really. You can, As you can see, the account values are still sorted in ascending order from lowest to highest. Now, what if I want to remove the filters, right? Uh, how do we do that? Well, we can do it in two different ways. We can go to the specific uh, columns where we have applied a filter. We had a filter on specialty earlier, so I could click on there. And here you see an option to clear filter from specialty. So you can do them one by one where you, <clears throat> where, excuse me, where you have applied a filter. Also, another option is to clear all the filters. And in order to do that, we'll go to the data tab and in the sort and filter group, we can click on clear. All right, so that gives me our original data. We have cleared all the previous filters. Next, we're going to use the auto filter option to search a table. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, apply the filter button in the name column. So we're going to click on the name column and we're going to type in the search box. We want to type the last name Nunez. It's pronounced Nunez in Spanish. It should have the letter Ñ, um, but here it's spelled N-U-N-E-Z. So make sure you spell it exactly as it was given in the table. Uh, this option, the search option, is not case sensitive. So even though Nunez or Nunez is with a capital N on the table, we can just write it all with lowercase. All right, so once we've entered that search string, make sure that you press OK. And as you can see, Excel found only two records with that last name. So the total has been updated. Now everything has been updated using only those two remaining records. Uh, let's go ahead and clear those filters again. So we're going to go to data, go to the sort and filter group. You got to make sure you are on the table. Okay, so data tab and then in the sort and filter group. Uh, click on clear. All right, that brings me back to my original data one more time. Uh, all right, this time we're going to use the auto filter option to apply a custom uh, filter, right? So the objective here is to uh, filter our data and find those records that have a supervisor review 
with a number between seven and nine, including seven and nine. So greater or equal than seven and lower or equal than nine. So we're gonna click the filter button in cell F8, the supervisor review, and we're gonna point to the number filters. And then here, this will display that sub menu. We wanna go all the way to the bottom to apply that custom filter. All right, so in the supervisor review field in the first one, as there are two, we want to select is greater or equal than. All right, and we want to say seven, right? So in the text box there, type a seven. And then here there are two options, and, or. Make sure and is selected. And the next one is, we wanna make sure that is uh, less or equal than. You need to scroll down to find that option. It's less than equal, less than or equal to nine. All right, we're gonna press okay. All right, and as you can see, all the remaining uh, records have a supervised review number between seven and nine. Now, notice that in that dialog box there was an option to select and or right we could select both criteria that's when we choose the word and or if you choose the word on then excel will display those records that meet one criteria or one criterion or the other uh, all right let's go ahead and uh, clear the filters one more time so click click on your table go to data and then clear and that brings me back to our original data one more time. All right, you may also want to turn off the auto filter buttons or turn them back on. So how do we do that? Uh, let's go ahead and click the filter button uh, on the data tab. So click on that filter button. And as you can see, all the arrows next to each field have disappeared. You can go ahead and press it again to make them appear once again. That's what the instructions are asking us to do. We want to keep them on. Uh, and now go ahead and save your work. Next, we're going to learn how to apply a more advanced filtering technique called criteria range. So a criteria range is just a separate location in our worksheet where we're going to enter a set of rules or criteria. We're going to ask Excel to compare our data against a set of rules and only display the records that meet the criteria. Now, the advantage of using a criteria range as opposed to the auto filter buttons that we had seen earlier is that once you've set up the range, you won't have to be accessing the drop down menus or the dialog box in order to enter those filters. So the other thing that we'll be doing is creating an extract range. Sometimes we want Excel to retrieve records or extract them from our table and to put them in a separate location once they meet our criteria, right? Instead of just displaying those, right? When we extract them from the table and put them in a different location, we keep the original table intact. So let's start by looking at how to create a criteria range. Uh, we're gonna set this criteria range right above the table as usually uh, the best way to do it because if we add more records later on below our table or more columns on the right-hand side of the table, uh, we don't want our criteria range to be on the way, right? So the best way is to put it at the top of the table. So select the range A7 to I8, A7 to I8, so the title and the column headers of our table. We're gonna press Control C, the shortcut for copy, and we're gonna scroll all the way up, select cell A1, and then simply press Enter to copy those two rows. We're gonna change the title to criteria range. So click on cell A1 and type criteria range. All right, press enter. And then if necessary, we wanna use the format painter to copy the formatting from row eight to row two. So I'm gonna select row eight, right, A8 to I8. We're gonna to go to the home tab and in the clipboard area, I'm going to click on the format painter button and then click on cell A2 and drag it all the way to I2. Release the mouse and as you can see, the formatting has been copied. 
Next, we're going to select the range A2 to I3. So A2 to I3. So the column headers plus one extra column, which is where we're going to put our rules, right? Uh, so we're going to click on the name box. We want to name this table criteria. All right, press enter. So A2 to I3 column headers in one row. We're going to name that table criteria. Next, we're going to query our table using this criteria range that we've just created. So we need to come up with some rules, right? And we want to put them right below the column headers because Excel will know that because our column headers are matching, they will apply those specific rules that we enter in row three to our main table. So we want to apply the following test. We want to keep the records that have a specialty of IRA slash SEP with an account value greater than 300,000. And we want the supervisor review number to be greater or equal than eight. So in cell D3 under specialty, we're gonna type IRA forward slash SEP. Go to the account values and here in this cell, we want to type greater or greater than 300,000. And finally, on cell F3, we want to type greater or equal than eight. All right, so make sure that your rules look exactly the same uh, as in your textbook. Now that we've applied our specific rules to our criteria range, um, Make sure that your auto filter buttons on your main table are active. If not, you know, you can go to the data tab and click on filter. That will turn them back on. Mine are still on, so I don't have to do that step. We're going to click on the table, the main table, to make it active. And this time, we want to go to the advanced filter uh, button, right, or option. So in the sort and filter group, go to advanced. And here you'll see this dialog box. We want to make sure that our list range and our criteria range match exactly the cells where we have entered our data. So our list range should be A8 to I23. Notice that all those references are absolute references, so they have a dollar sign in front of the letter and the number. And then under criteria range, we want A2 to I3. So everything looks good. If you have something different, make sure that you change it. Mine looks perfect, so I'm going to click OK. So I am asking Excel to use that entire table to match it against the criteria that I've entered in the criteria range and to keep only those records that meet those rules or meet that criteria. So there are only three resulting records, right, that are in the IRA slash SEP specialty with an account value greater than 300,000 and a supervised review number of eight or above. Uh, all right, so we're going to clear the filters. So go to the data tab and go to clear. That gives me back my original table, right? I have all the records back up on my table. Uh, the instructions say that at, at this point, if you have lost the banded rows, those are the rows with the different colors, you can go to uh, the data design tab and click on the blue table style medium 14, which is this fourth one for me here, as that's the original table style that we had applied, right? So if you have lost the banded rows at this point, you can go back and select that style once again. All right, so next we're gonna learn how to create an extract range. So this time we're gonna apply the same filter using the same rules, but instead of just displaying the records that meet the criteria, we want Excel to extract them from the table and put them in a separate location. So we're going to select the range A7 to I8, once again, A7 to I8, the title and the column headers of the main table. We're going to press Control C to copy. And we're going to go to cell A25, and we can press Enter to copy the title and headers, right? We're going to select cell A25. We want to change this uh, title to Extract Area extract area, press enter, and then we're going to select the range A26 to I45, A26 to I45. 
I'm selecting a pretty big range here to have enough, enough space to extract all the records that I need, especially if later on I have to add some records to the original table. All right, so once I have that box selected, we're going to go to the name box and we're going to uh, call this ext extract. All right, press enter. So that's going to be the range name. Uh, press enter and then if necessary we're going to use the format painter to copy the formatting and wrap the column headings to match the table headings so i'm going to go back to cells um a8 to i8 i'm going to go to home the clipboard group click on format painter and this time i want to copy it to all the cells in row 26. So drag it through that row and then just release your bottom. The instructions are also asking me to use the um, wrap column heading option. Um, all of mine are wrapped properly. The ones that have two rows are wrapped properly, so I don't need to do that step. All right? We basically want to match the table headers, the column headers to the original table. So now we're ready to extract a record. So we're going to click anywhere on the main table to make it active. On the data tab, we want to go to advance, and this time we want to select copy to another location, right? So we're going to apply the same filters, but this time we want Excel to retrieve those records and put them in a separate location. So let's check our list range. It should be A8 to I23. That is correct. Our criteria range is that table that we created at the top of the worksheet, and it should be A2 to I23. Uh, three, that is correct, and we're going to copy to A26 to I45. All right, so it looks like everything is correct. We can go ahead and press OK. So I'm going to scroll down to the extract area, and as you can see, we have the same three records that we had before, but now they have been uh, reported in a separate area and extract area of our table. So go ahead and save your work. Our next learning objective is to learn how to use database functions. There are 12 different database functions in Excel, and they all start with the letter D to differentiate them from the regular functions. So for example, if we use D average, we're gonna ask Excel to calculate the average of the numerical entries in a certain field that pass a certain test. In the same way, if we use D count, we'll ask Excel to count the number of entries in a certain field that pass a certain criterion. And of course, we can do this to other functions such as uh, the sum function, maximum, minimum, etc. As I said, we're going to add a D in front of them, D for data table. So they will be called D max, D min, D sum, etc. Now, when we uh, construct one of these functions, the syntax will include three different arguments. The first one is going to be the table range, which is the matrix, right, of our table that Excel will examine. The second field is the field name, and we're going to put that in quotation marks. It's a numerical field, and we'll put it in quotation marks unless we have previously named that column. And then the third argument is the criteria range, and this is the specific test that our data will have to pass in order to be included in the calculation. So let's take a look at an example. We're going to work with the D average and D count functions first. We're going to start by creating an output area where we're going to report our answers. Step one says change the width of columns O, P, and Q to 18. So I'm going to scroll all the way up and to the right until I can see columns O, P, and Q. We're going to select them, right click on those columns, and then go to column width. We're going to change that to 18, press OK. Then step two is cell, select cell O1, and we're going to type output area to enter a criteria area title, right? So in this area, we're going to enter our uh, criteria. So let's go ahead and center the title across the selection O1 to Q1. Select those three cells, and then right click. Once you see that drop down menu, select format cells. Make sure that you're in the alignment tab across the top and in the horizontal box. Click on that drop down menu and select center across selection. All right, so we have centered that title, the title of the criteria area. 
Next, we're going to enter other labels as is shown on the table right above figure 659. So in this section, I'm going to let, let you enter this uh, data by yourself while I do it, and then we'll meet again uh, once you're done with that step. So you can pause the video at this point. Okay, so I have finished entering all the labels as instructed in step three from cells O2 to Q13. We're still in step three. We're going to now work on formatting these entries. So bold the title cells O8 and O11. All right, I'm going to click on cell O8 locator, bold that cell, and also we want to bold O11, the function branch criteria. We also want to center these entries across columns O through Q. So I'm going to select O8 to Q8, right click, go to format cells, the alignment tab, and in the horizontal box, I want to scroll down to center across selection. Press OK. I'll do the same for cells O11 to Q11. So right click alignment and then center across selection in the horizontal box. All right, they're both center. Now we're gonna use the format painter to copy the, the formatting from cell L1 to O1. So I'm gonna click on L1. We're gonna copy the formatting of this title. So in the home tab, clipboard group, go click on format painter and we're gonna paste it into O1. All right, so as you can see the title now is bold, bigger font and it's center, right? We also uh, want to copy the formatting from cell L2. So I'm going to click on L2, Format Painter. We want to copy this formatting to cell O12 to Q12. So the three branches. Right. Now, as you can see, they are blue and they match the um, format of the previous table, right? Uh, if necessary, we want to ensure that cell O7 matches the formatting of cell O6. So just to make sure, I'm going to click on cell O6, click on Format Painter, and we're going to copy it onto O7, right? Just to make sure that they have the same formatting. All right, so we've done entering our data. Now we're going to go ahead and start using some of these database functions. We'll start with the D average. We're going to take the average of the supervisor review numbers for each branch, and we're going to enter them for these first three cells. We're also going to work with the D count function as we're going to use it to count the number of managers that have a pool rating, right? So we're going to be entering our functions in this area. Go ahead and select cell Q2, and we're going to type the function. So press the equal sign, and then type D average, open parentheses. Here, our first argument is our database, right? Or our table range. So the table is on cell A8, colon, to I22. And you don't have to put the letters in capital. You can make them lowercase. Comma, that takes us to the second argument. The second argument is the field or column. We want to take the average of the supervised for review. We have to put it in quotation marks. So open quotation marks, marks and type supervisor review, close quotation mark, comma. Now, now we're moving into the third argument. The third argument is your criteria range. The test, right? that this um, data has to pass in order to be included in this calculation. So we want this average to be calculated only for the AVEN branch. So our, our criteria range is going to be O12 to O13. So O12 column to O13, right? You can see it, it's highlighted in red. We want the branch AVEN. So close your parentheses and then you can press enter, right? So we have 9.000833, we're going to uh, work on formatting this number um, in a later step. So everything looks go good at the, up to this point. Uh, let's go ahead and enter the next one. So press the equal sign in cell Q3. This time we want the average for the Brandsburg branch. So we're going to do the same. D average, open parentheses. The table range will be the same. So A8 column to I22, comma, the field is supervisor review, close quotation marks, comma, and this time we want our criteria range to be O, uh, sorry, P12 to P13, right? So we have a column in between. 
close parentheses. Notice that when I type that criteria range, that criteria range is highlighted in red at the bottom of the table, so you know exactly where it's coming from. All right, so we're asking Excel to calculate the average of a supervisor review number for all of those entries that are in the Brownsburg, Brownsburg branch. Press enter. And then the last one is equals D average, open parentheses, same table range A8 to I22, comma, open quotation mark, supervisor field, uh, sorry, supervisor review, right? Quotation marks, comma, and then the last one, we want this time the playing field branch. So we want that Q12 uh, column to Q13. Close parentheses, press enter. All right, now that we have the averages for each of the branches, uh, we can go ahead and format those cells. So select Q2, Q3, and Q4. We're going to use the number format. So click on number and make sure you have two decimal places. I already do, so it looks good to me. Uh, and let's go ahead and select cell Q5. Now we're gonna count the number of managers that have a poor rating. So press the equal sign. D count is our database function for counting. Open parentheses, the same database, A8 column to I22 comma we want to use this supervisor review field close quotation marks and this time we want to use those with a poor rating so that we have on the rating table on column m right so we want the header of the column with the respective rating so we need we're going to need cells m2 to m3 right see how they are highlighted in red so we want that header that says rating with a poor uh, review, right? With a poor rating. Close your parentheses and press enter. All right, so we have two of those managers with a poor rating. There are four other functions that are very useful when querying a table or analyzing data. They are the count if function, sum if function, match and index functions. So let's start with the first two. We can use the sum if and count if functions to add the values within a range or count the number of values in a range that meet a certain criteria. So let's take a look at how we can use this too in our example. We're gonna use the sum if function first to add the account values for accounts that are either checking or savings account. So in general, the arguments in the summing function are three. First, we want the criteria range, second, the data, and finally, the sum range. So let's go ahead and click on cell Q6. That's where we're gonna enter our count or sum if function. So press the equal sign, sum if, all together. Uh, open parentheses. All right, so our first argument is our criteria range. And here we wanna enter the column where we have our specialty, right? So D9 to D22, comma. The second one is the criteria that we want our data to meet. And that is that we want the account um, type to be either checking or savings. Because it is a text entry, we wanna put it in quotation marks. So checking slash savings close quotation marks, comma. And then the last argument is the sum um, or the range that we wanna sum, right? Because we're, we're using the sum if function. We wanna add the account values and those are in column E in our table. So our range would be E9 to E22. Close parentheses and press enter. All right, so that gives me 1,721,540. We're gonna apply the accounting number format style, so click on cell Q6, and in the number group, you can press the equal the dollar sign, right, to apply the accounting number format. All right, there we go. So it looks exactly like in our textbook now. Next, we're gonna use the count if function. This time, we want to use this function to count the number of account managers who handle loans. So there are two arguments in this function. The first one is the count range, where we're gonna be looking for the data. And the second one is called data, and that's a specific uh, value that we want to match, right? So let's go ahead and 
uh, make sure you're on cell Q7, press the equal sign, type count if, open parentheses, so our range is our column with the specialty, so D9 to D22, comma, and the data that we want to match is loans, right? We want to count those observations where the specialty is equal to loans. Again, it's a text field, so we put it in quotation marks. Close your parentheses, press enter. All right, so the, it seems like there are four account managers who handle loans. Next, we're going to learn how to use the match and index functions. All right, so in our next step, we want to uh, combine these two functions, both the match and the index function, to use it as a locator. We're going to enter an employee ID number in cell Q9, and in cell Q10, we want Excel to return the name of the branch in which that employee works. So in order to do this, we have to combine these two functions. So let's go ahead and start by entering the employee ID number that we're going to be looking for. And of course, we're going to just choose a random number here. The idea is that later on, you can change the number, the ID number here, and Excel will return the uh, name of the branch in which that employee works. So we want to use ID number 18481, right? And this is just a random ID number from our table. All right, so here we should be able to use the match index function combination to uh, make Excel return that branch name. But I'm going to break it down. I'm just going to use a match function first to show you what that uh, isolated function does, and then we're going to combine it with the index function. All right, so the match function is uh, can be used to find the position number of specific piece of data in a table, right? So in this case, what I want to uh, Excel to do with a match function is to find this specific ID number and tell me the position in which it is in our table, the row specifically, right? That's what I mean by position. So we're going to enter the equal sign and type the word match, right? That's the match function that we're using. So the arguments or syntax in the match function are three. We start with our lookup value, the value that we're looking for. So that is going to be in cell Q9. We don't want to type the value. We want to click or type the name of the cell, right? We want to use a relative reference so that when we change that number later on, this function will be automatically updated. So our lookup value is Q9. That's where we have our ID number, comma. The second argument in our match function is our, we call it our lookup array. So this is the area in which we're going to be looking for this specific value. So this is going to be the first column. That's where we have our ID number. So A9 colon all the way to A to um, A22, right? So first column, comma. And then the third argument is called the match type. And here the, the options are either negative one, zero, or positive one. Zero if we want an exact match. That's what we're looking for here. So I'm going to put a zero. And by the way, if you put one, that means that we are looking for values that are greater than our lookup value, negative one values that are less than our lookup value, right? In this case, we want an exact match, so we're going to put that as zero. I'm going to close parentheses, and I'm going to enter, press enter, just so you can see what we get. All right, so what do I get? 10, what does that mean? It's not the name of the branch, right? No, because this function, the match function, gives you the position number of the value that we're looking for. So I'm going to scroll to the left so I can show you on the table where that specific ID number is right here, and that is row number 10 in our table, even though it's row number 19 overall in our worksheet. If you count, the position number is row 10 on our data table. All right, so the match function then gave me that position, row number 10. How do I make it now give me the name of the brand for that particular row? So here's where we're going to combine it with the index function. What does the index function do? The index function finds a specific value for a relative row and column. I have the row already. I know that the row is 10. That match function is giving me the row 10. So I'm going to put here the index function in front of the match function, open parentheses. The first argument in the index function is equal to the range. So the range where we're going to be looking for this particular value, right? So that's going to be the entire table, A9 to I22, comma, right? So the first argument in the index function, again, is our range, the entire table. The second argument is the row, right? So that's our match function in this case. That's going to give me the value of 10, row 10. So going 
to the end of that function, press a comma. We're going to enter now the third argument, which is the number of the column, right? So let's go back to our table for a second. Where do we have our branch names? They are in column number three, as you can see. So I'm going to type three and then close that parentheses and I'm going to press enter. All right, so as you can see now, Excel return the name of that branch, Aven, right? So ideally you want to do this, as I said, with a relative reference so that if I change that employee ID number to something else, Excel will return the corresponding branch for that particular employee. Go ahead and save your work. Make sure that you remember the name of the file that you just saved and its location as we will go back to the file later on. So next we're going to learn how to summarize the data using subtotals. We're going to calculate subtotals by branch. And in order to do so, we need to start by sorting our data. So make sure that you scroll to display the original table. We're going to click any cell within that table. And if necessary, we want to click the filter button. So we're going to go to the data tab, sort and filter group, and we're going to click on filter. So as you can see, the auto filter buttons for each field have appeared. We're going to click the filter button in cell C8, so for branch. And here we want to sort it from A to Z. All right, so as you can see now, the branches have been ordered in uh, alphabetical order, Avon, Brownsburg, and Plainfield. Now, the other adjustment that we need to make is that we're going to convert this table into a normal range. And the reason for that is that data tables do not support the subtotal command. So right click anywhere in the table and then we're going to go to table in the drop down menu. So here convert to range is the second option and you will be asked do you want to convert the table to a normal range? We want to select yes. All right so as you can see now this is just a range it's no longer a table we don't have those auto filter buttons in each field. Uh, next, we're going to display our subtotals. And as I said, we're going to do this by branch. So click in one of the numeric fields you wish to subtotal. In this case, we want to do this for column E. And then we're going to go to the subtotal button, go to data, outline, in next to the forecast group. And then the third option here is subtotal. So click on there. And in the first box, at each change in, we want to change this to branch. So click on that drop down menu. We want to do this by branch. Then if necessary, we want to click on that use function box. And here we want to select some, which is what we already had. And then in the last part at subtotal two, we just want to make sure that we click account values and that all the other boxes are not selected. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and press okay. You can go ahead and deselect the range if necessary. We're going to zoom to 100%. So in the bar on the right hand side, let's go ahead and magnify that to 100% so we can see the table more clearly. And then here you can just scroll as necessary to be able to see uh, the entire table and the subtotals. All right, so as you can see, we've generated a subtotal for Avon another subtotal for Brownsburg, and then we have the last subtotal for Plainfield, as well as an overall grand total. Now, once we create or calculate subtotals, Excel will automatically add an outline feature on the left-hand side. So we want to click on the second outlining column header. So you can see here at the very top, we have one, two, three. Uh, I'm going to click on two and that displays only the subtotals that we have calculated. You can experiment here by clicking on one which only shows you the grand total, two is where we were earlier, the branch subtotals plus the grand total and then if we click on three we have the entire table with each of the subtitles. So I'm going to go back to two. You can also experiment by pressing this plus sign here. Uh, every time you press a plus sign you will display the details for each of the branches. All right, so we're going to go back to uh, two, right? Just so that we can see 
the figure just like it looks on figure 669 in our textbook with the totals for each brand and the grand total. So this time we want to save the file with a new name as a CEX6 bank account managers with subtotals. So I'm going to click on file, save as, and I want to change this to SC dash or underscore EX underscore six, another underscore bank account managers with subtotals. All right, so we're going to save it. There we go. If you want to remove the subtotals, make sure that you click anywhere on the table with the subtotals. We're going to go to the data tab, the outline group, and click on subtotal. And here we want to click on remove all on the bottom left corner of this dialog box. All right, so as you can see, we go back to the original table. All the subtotals have been removed. So here the instruction step three says to close the file without quitting Excel. So go ahead and press on that X. And if you are prompted to save the file, click Don't Save. Our last task in this model is to create a tree map chart. So this chart is going to help us to create a hierarchical view of our data, which will make it much easier for us to identify possible trends or patterns in the data. In our example, we're going to create a tree map chart to compare account managers who have brought in new money except for loans. So Excel is going to display the different branches or sub-branches as different rectangles organized by size. Uh, let's go ahead and follow step number one. We want to open the file, the original file, before we calculated subtotals. So as you can see, I have both files saved here. I want to open the one without the subtotals. So open that file and scroll down as necessary so that you can see the entire table. Click anywhere, any cell in the table. And next we're going to add those filter bottoms. So go to the data tab in the sort and filter group. We're going to click on filter. And then here we want to sort the data in ascending order by name. So click on the name auto filter button and we're going to select sort A to Z. So in ascending order. So you can see my records now, my names are in alphabetical order. We also want to click the filter button in cell D8. So for specialty, click on it and we want to exclude loans. So make sure that you uh, deselect that check mark in the loans box and we press OK. Now as a result, my number of records was reduced right as we eliminated those records that are loans. Next, we're going to drag to select cells B8 to E22. All right, we're going to click on insert, the insert tab on the main ribbon. And here we want to insert a hierarchy chart. So this, this one in the middle and click on that button. We want to select the tree map chart. All right, if you click on that chart, we want to select the six chart style. So they're in order one, two, three, four, five, six. If you put your mouse over, you can see that that's style number six. So click on it to select that particular style. Next, we're going to click on the chart elements button. It's the plus sign on the right hand side of the chart. Click on it. And here we want to click the legend checkbox to remove that check mark. So remove it and that removes our um, legends. Uh, all right, if you point to each of the rectangles in the chart, you're going to see the screen tip showing the uh, data points, right, for each of the different categories. So you can experiment uh, by doing that. All right, next we're going to move the chart to a different sheet and edit the fonts. So go ahead and click the move chart button. So click on the chart, go to the chart design uh, tab, and on the far right, you'll see move chart. All right, so here we want to move it to a new sheet. So select the new sheet box, and we're going to call this new sheet manager's tree map. All right, so once you've typed in the new name, go ahead and press OK. Next, we're going to right click the chart title 
and then we're going to click the edit text and on the home tab we're going to change the font size to number 24 so size 24 all right and we're going to type new money accounts oh, new money accounts there we go so we're changing the title of this chart we're going to click uh, any of the data labels in the chart and we're going to change the font size to 14. so click on any of those data labels and we're going to go to font size and we'll change it to number 14. finally we're going to play with some of the settings that are unique to tree map charts we're going to make some of the branches thinned out and in general we're just going to make it a more user-friendly chart so let's go ahead and right click any of the rectangles of the chart to display the shortcut menu. And here we want to click on format data series. And we want to select banner. All right. You can also click on the other ones just to see what happens. Non, no uh, label options, overlapping label options, but we want to select banner again so make sure that you select that one before you move on to the next step uh, next we're going to right click on any of the data labels and this time we want to select format data labels there we go and here we want to display a check mark in the value checkbox so we want to add the value to each of those labels and then the category name should have already been displayed so not only I'm displaying the name, but also the value, the account value. We're also going to make sure that the value of each account is displayed on a separate line. So in the separator box, we're going to click on it and we want to put new line. So as you can see now, the value goes into a separate line right below the category name. Uh, all right. So I think this is it. We follow all the instructions. Our very last step is to save our file with a new name so go to file save as and the instructions are to save it as sc underscore ex underscore six underscore bank account managers there we go with tree map Notice that the beginning of each word is capitalized. And then finally, we're going to put underscore and then put your name. All right. So make sure you save it. And that's the file that you're going to submit. Always check on MindHub what is the file naming convention that they want you to use in order to submit the file. I will see you in the next video.